Greetings everybody, my name is Tommy the Game Master and welcome to my channel. Well, Star Wars Weeks continues with another review. You know, whenever you buy a giant collection of games, there are always great games that are worth way more than you pay for them in the collection. Whether it's Fantasy Star 4 in some of the Sega Genesis collections, or Street Fighter 2 in the Capcom Classics collections for the PS2, they're well worth the money for the collections themselves just because those games are so good and oftentimes sell for just as much money as the collection elsewhere or even more because Street Fighter 2 is more on the Switch than the actual collection was on the PlayStation 2, just that I would get that out there. Anyways, in the Star Wars collection on Steam, I would give that reward often to Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. But I'm not looking at those types of games, but rather the other type of games on the collection. Because while there are always one or two terrific games on those collections that are worth more than the collections themselves, there is also one or two games on there that are always complete crap. And it once comes to the Steam Star Wars collections, it's Star Wars Republic Heroes, and I'm not just looking at one, but two versions of this turd. So how did I get two versions? Well, I bought the bundle on Steam and then tried to play it to see if it was as bad as they said it was. Turns out, for some reason, my PC wouldn't launch games for Windows Live that it uses to play the game. So I decided, what the hell, it's a cheap enough game, I'll pick it up for the PlayStation 3. Well, on the day that my PS3 version arrived, well, my computer up and crashed on me. Fortunately, it was the type of crash that only needed to reinstall Windows files, and I didn't lose any of my personal files, but I did have to re-download, well, virtually everything. Well, one of the things that now works is the old games for Windows Live platforming, meaning... Yeah, my PC version works again just fine. So I had two games, so I sat down and played the PS3 version just to see if it's bad. No oh boy, yeah. Star Wars Republic Heroes is a bad game, and it's a special kind of bad on the PS3. I'll be taking a look at both of these today, but I'll be probably centered more around the PS3 version because that's the version I played. Anyways, let's get cracking. Now, the story is the best part of the game, as it's basically just a filler arc from the series, and like most of the arcs, there are two stories going on that tie together towards the end. Basically, you have Anakin and Ahsoka battling to free Ryleth from the Separatists, while Obi-Wan and Master Plo are trying to defend a Republic space station from being overrun by Separatist droids. Throw in some old bad guys like Asajj Ventress and Cad Bane into the mix and you got yourself an arc that's right out of the series and it's not a bad one. I was entertained enough by the story arcs in of themselves. My only complaint is that this game was made with the PlayStation 2 in mind. That text that they use for the subtitles certainly hasn't aged well. I wish that was the only problem this game had though because it gets a lot worse from here. Unfortunately, the text isn't the main problem, as the gameplay just, well, sucks. It's not like the worst game ever, it's not even so bad it's fun to poke fun of in a YouTube video bad. It's just one of those games where every bad decision a developer can make, they decided to do. Well, let's start off with the camera. It's fixed, and fixed in all the wrong places. The number of times I jumped to my death because of a bad camera was numerous, and yes, it's very frustrating when you can't figure out where to stick your jumps, especially since jumping is supposed to be somewhat automatic and half the time it requires more finesse than a Super Mario game. The good news here is that dying doesn't have much of a penalty, you just lose a handful of points. And what's so special about these points? Well, when you complete a stage, these points can be used to upgrade your moves and abilities so you don't die as often and won't lose the points. Which is kind of bad because it makes it pointless when you think about it. There's no need to upgrade if death only makes you lose a few of those upgrade points as you are never sent back very far in most places. Seriously, why really worry about upgrading if the only thing you lose when you die is what you use to upgrade? In a proper action JRPG, you upgrade your character to keep from dying because you don't want to be sent back to the last save point at the beginning of whatever area you're in. Here, it's not needed even though the upgrades do work and make you more powerful. 
it makes little difference because you're going to be able to plow through enemies regardless of your abilities and stats. Oh, and the Jedi missions don't frustrate you. Wait until you get to the clone missions, which are all twin-stick shooter stages. Now, there's nothing wrong with the way the clones work. In fact, in general, I had more fun being the clones than I did being the Jedi. That is until you hit these. What are these? These are the unnecessary and crammed-in puzzle mini-games found in a lot of cheap and generic licensed games like this. They're not here to add anything much new to the game they're just here to be annoying and may take up more time than it needs to be i really do hate these and while there aren't as bad as say the playstation 2 incredible hulk annoying they're just bad enough to trip me up for several minutes and leave me seriously seriously frustrated another problem i have with the game especially on the ps3 although it did happen to a me on the PC, but nowhere near as much, nor as intrusive, is the game's ability to just freeze up for a moment, just to load something new. This is beyond annoying. You're moving around and the game just freezes to load something up. And it happens all the time on the PS3. It happens a little bit on the PC, but they're just usually momentarily frame jump is far more rare. Like I said, you just notice a Flip on the PC. On the PlayStation 3, it actually stops the game so it can load new data. Not good. Anyways, if you can't tell that frustrating death, but at the same time, no challenge whatsoever because death is meaningless, kind of makes this game a bit of an odd snooze fest. It doesn't feel like there is any reward for completing anything, and it gets old after a while. That said, that's not to say the game is complete trash. A few of the side activities, like flying ships through shooter stages and even jacking droids, was a clever idea, and I don't care what Star Wars game it is, using lightsabers to destroy a bunch of battle droids will always be fun and satisfying. Oh, and one last thing, could you shut the freaking Muppet up? Him constantly coming on and acting like I'm a moron when it comes to the basic controls gets really annoying, and he pops up pretty much throughout most of the game, just stopping the action completely. Yoda gets annoying. Well, outside of the already annoying fixed camera, how are the graphics? They're not very good. Don't get me wrong, they fit the Clone Wars cartoon series okay, but it's obvious from the amount of detail and polish on things that this was meant with the PS2 in mind. And oh yeah, it was only limited released on that console, by the way. Way to go, LucasArts. It's no wonder why Disney dropped you after they purchased Lucas out completely. If you're wondering who wins in the graphics war between the PC and the PS3, the PC easily does rendering at a full 1080p and does it at 60 frames per second, which is way better than what I got from the PS3, obvious just by looking at it side by side. Anyways, the colors were way better on the PC, and the PC also froze up less. As I said, the PS3 freezes constantly, the PC doesn't, so get this game on the PC if you are still curious enough about purchasing. Just buyer beware when it comes to the Windows Live. The music is certainly passable and nothing bad here. The voice acting is all from the show, which is all pretty good and pretty believable when it comes to its acting, with the exception of one character, the guy who does Anakin's voice. I, um, I just want to say thank you for helping my men. Don't mention it, Sergeant. We never leave one of our own behind. Any word from General Kenobi? Only when he know why I hate that performance? It's because it's not what Anakin is supposed to sound like. It sounds like Anakin has a heart, a soul, he has humor and a personality. Like if all of a sudden, due to a traumatic event, he lost his mind and became an unfeeling monster, it would scar his friends and other characters in unimaginable ways. That's not what Anakin is supposed to sound like. This is what Anakin is supposed to sound like. Don't make me kill you. You see that lifeless and as dull as Driftwood? We want him to sound like if he got stuck in an unfeeling robotic suit, it would be an upgrade to his overall personality, not a downgrade. <laughs> Alright, I'm kidding. Just a little bit here. The voice acting for everyone, especially Anakin, is top-notch here. And it's one of the reasons why a lot of Star Wars fans love the series 
way more than the prequels. We get an Anakin that's actually likable, and we get a little bit more of that in this performance, and he has a great performance in this game, too. So, yeah, if you're an Anakin Skywalker fan or just want to go and have a better character than what he was in the prequels, the cartoon's definitely worth checking out, and the game does a reasonably good job in this area as well. On Steam, Star Wars The Clone Wars Republic Heroes runs you $20 regular price for a game this old and not very fun, that's way too much. I bought it as part of a Star Wars pack that is no longer available that included the likes of Knights of the Old Republic and The Force Unleashed. The sales price for that collection was $23, meaning I paid about $1.50 for this game, which is about the right amount of money if you ask me. Anyways, at the standard price for the current bundle, which contains all the Steam Star Wars games minus Shadow of the Empire, is about $210 regular price. Going that path would make this game about $10, which is still way too much of for this game, even if the rest of the games on that collection are pure gold. Wait for this one on sale. I wouldn't pay any more than $2 for it, and only if you're a fan of the Clone Wars TV show. Well, that was fun. Time to look at the game that does the Clone Wars justice. Let's take a look at Star Wars Republic Commando.